Okay, hey everybody. <laughs> um, this is a video, another talking video of just talking about repairing tips. You know, I know there is a lot of people in this community that aren't sure about how to repair stuff, and you know, and all that, and uh, just follow. Try to follow our restoration videos, and um, you know. For me, I don't really necessarily learn by watching. I have to learn by doing it. I have to have someone tell me what to do, but I need to be actually the one working on it. You know? So, I know watching our uh, repairing videos can be uh, still struggling sometimes, but still watch those and, um, here, I have to pause. Oh, yeah. Always make sure you have the right tools. The right screwdrivers, the right sizes. You don't want to strip screws out, trust me. And some screws strip out anyways. But, you know, make sure you have an assortment of small screwdrivers, big screwdrivers, needle nose pliers, uh, thin needle nose pliers, thick ones. You're going to need all those different kind of tools. And I recommend you go into a store like Ace Hardware to get that kind of stuff for them. Um, um, and Radio Shack, if they're still open in your area, most of them have went out of business, but some are still open. Um, and I think there's this one store, um, I forgot what it's called. I got a bunch of tools there for, they're actually pretty cheap. Like they, they also have, like have, oh yeah, you need soldering irons too, a soldering iron to solder wires. You need solder, um, you need wire strippers. There's uh, different kinds. There's ones that you squeeze and it um, pulls the thing back so it strips the wire. And then there's ones that you that have all these different sizes for different sized wires. And you. Uh, and then there are actually some. Yeah, they actually have uh, Bailey's on too. Ones too. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, for like different sized wires, so you uh, cut off the right amount, so you're not just cutting the wire, you know, and you uh, strip it like that. Um, so make sure you have the right tools, um, gears, those plastic motor shaft gears, those are, you, 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 we get them through eBay. You type in, if you need 10 tooth gear, motor shaft gears, type in, it's good to have all three kinds of gears. Cause you're going to need all kind, all, all three of them. There's eight tooth gears, there's nine tooth gears, and there's 10 tooth gears. You're going to need all the kinds because you're going you need to use the ones now, that are tooths, the main ones that you use a lot are tens and eights yeah and then there are some you'll run into that have nines which won't even work with tens or eights so just you got to keep that in mind it's like they'll sneak up on you sometimes when you least expect to use it yeah so make sure you have uh, you buy them off ebay you type in plastic motor shaft gear ten, ten tooth plastic motor shaft gear um and um they come in pack, like the ten tooths come in packs of ten, I believe. And you can, you better. I always choose quantity of two. They're I think seven ninety nine a pack, and the other twos are the others are cheaper. Uh, nine tooths come in a pack of fifty, um, and then eight tooths come in a pack of twenty, I believe. So just. Search and they they come from China, so they do take about two weeks to oh, a month to also come. Pay attention to the shaft size. The shaft size of the gear. Two, is two oh, thank you for reminding me. Two thank millimeters. So put two double M, eight tooth shaft yeah, motor shaft Thanks gear. for reminding me because I would have forgot to mention that. Yes, two millimeters. The hole should be two mi The shaft needs to be two millimeters. Okay. Um. Uh, speakers. Those are also on eBay, but. I actually have never ordered speakers from eBay yet before, but like if you type in toy speaker, you'll, you'll find some. There's like there's like there's those little flat coin speakers, and there then there's some of those bulky ones. Um, if you need speakers that size, you would have to order those through eBay as well. They also there's motors on eBay too. Um, type in toy motor, and you'll you'll find some motors. Um, honestly, um, you know. If you know what's wrong with your item, but you don't really know how to fix it, like okay, if the motors, if you're if you're hearing a buzzing noise, there's only two options that it can be: a rubber belt 
or a split split gear. Now, more commonly, it's split gears now. Back when they were first released, split gears didn't happen yet because they weren't old yet. Now, you're, it's pretty much going to be split gears. Um, so, always have gears on hand. Um, so, yeah, if you're hearing a buzzy noise, it's either, again, a gear or a, or a belt. And um, other gears... Not other gears that are not motor shaft gears, those are trickier because, like, square shaft gears for like the pop culture and a lot of gym items do use square shafts. We haven't found any place you can buy those yet. Um, yeah, we have not found any solutions for those, unfortunately. And it's, it's kind of aggravating, you know, because you know. Right now, it's the, the motor shaft gears are, are the main cause right now, since they're small. But over time, as the items get older, the square shafts are going to become a, a constant problem. So, and they're only going to get worse, not better. Yes. So, keep that in mind. But for now, let's not worry about that. Let's worry about what we have problems with first. You know, if you know what to do, but you, you know... You kind of don't know where things go, or it, you ask a GMA member like Bailey or me, or maybe may ask your parents to help you. They might not know how to. It, they might not exactly know what's wrong with it. But if you need, like me, sometimes you know, two hands and two arms are not enough. Sometimes you need someone holding it for you. Ask your parents to help you because that will help. You know, ask them what you need them to hold. Ask them what you need them to do. And I'm sure they'll help you. Because um, back before I, I knew how to fix stuff, my dad and grandpa fixed stuff for me. And they were they were pretty good. Like like I said, split gears weren't a problem back then. So that was nothing to worry about. It was either wires, rubber belts, speakers, but not really. If speakers blew out, I just kind of left them blown out because I didn't know. So like I said, wires, speaker, uh, mo uh. <laughs> okay, wires, rubber belts, and honestly, that's kind of it, really. I mean, really. I mean, motors kind of burnt out, and motors... Uh, Usually the rubber belts are the first thing, you know, sometimes. It well, like it all varies. nowadays, not really, if an item hasn't been used. Rubber belts are something that wear down over time of being used. Gears, on the other hand, break whether you use them or not. You can find something that has never been tested once before and the gear will be completely split and the motor will be locked up depending on how old it's been. If it's older than 10 years, the motor is going to be locked up if it's never once been used. So you're going to have to open up the motor. There's little flaps on the motors. You use a little flathead. You pry the things off and uh, you, you know, kind of, and then, or you can just oil it. You can put some oil in there, and that, that'll help. Um, but yeah, my parents, my my dad and grandpa always used to be the ones to fix my items. The first time when my floating ghost's fishy line went out, they actually helped me out a lot. Yes. On that. Like they helped me replace the fishing line. I remember that. I forgot to even tell you that, Jordan. Yeah, my dad, um, just figured out how to fix the floating ghosts. I mean, like I said, 2005 is when they started making... Watch my documentary for... Because I don't want to explain all this floating ghost stuff in another video. But 2005 is when the stream started breaking... Like, it is when they started making the ghosts have stream problems. Um, so from 2005 to 2007, my dad was the one fixing them. And, you know, he didn't always have time to do that. You know? Uh, they would be broke. They'd be broken for maybe two weeks to a couple months before he would have time to get to them. Like I had the floating witch, the floating pirate, the green eyed skull, purple dawn of the dead, were and the floating skeletons because I yeah were the ones that always snapped, you know. And by the time he got done fixing one of those, another one snapped of those. It, like out of those six that five or six that I listed. Those are the ones that always had snapped strain, and they always, always snapped at, at different times. And he just, 
he couldn't, he didn't have time for it. So one day he just, he showed me step by step what to do. He didn't show me, he gave it to me, he handed it to me and he said, this is what you need to do. He showed me, he showed me what I needed to do. And that's ever since the first time that he taught me, I knew how to fix him. So if you have a parent, you know, that is kind of good with this stuff, you know, don't underestimate it. it yeah. And my grandpa, you know, my grandpa always used to take home items to fix, like, um, like my spirit balls, for example, the, like the, those things constantly had issues, even back when they were released, you, like their eyes would go out, like the wires would pull off some of them within 10 activations, some of them within just one hour of use, you know, and my grandpa, uh, my, well, actually my dad was the first one that were, but like I said, he didn't, he didn't want to constantly, my grandpa was, you know, he was more willing to put the time in to fix that stuff than my dad was. So my grandpa, but my, my dad fixed it first. Um, the LED I pulled off on my fortune teller one. And like, I originally I had the microphone version and um, the eye went out and we just sent it back. We just sent it back and we got the Walmart version without the microphone same thing happened so we knew that was going to be a common problem so we had so we wanted to fix it you know and it's the same thing with the floating ghost after getting the second female ghost and the strain snapped on that we knew that was going to be a common problem so we had to learn how to fix them because buying new ones don't help they're all going to break you know so you know my dad we had to pull we, we had to get the globe off there's a screw that holds the globe on on the spirit ball um there you had to slice a actually slice the rubber in the back a bit and pull the it the mask is also hot glued in some places so you have to pull the rubber mask off and then there's a bunch of screw holders you have to it's it, there's a big plastic frame holding the head it, that's the actual head the frame is the head and you have to open the head up and then you can have access to what to soldering the wire back on to the uh, LED eyes um, it's best to extend the wire a little bit because that's the reason they come off in the first place um so yeah um so my dad learned how to fix that and then the future times my grandpa fixed them I, again more examples the strain the mouth the strain the okay the skeleton spear ball has strain in its mouth and that always snapped so my grandpa fixed that every time it broke my witch spirit ball from Target, it was dead right out of the box. The belt snapped after an hour of use, I guess, maybe. And the speaker was dead. I, w I had to smack it with the spirit ball leg to get it to talk. It was all scratchy and it just, it kept going out and it died completely. So right out of the box, two problems. Right out of the box. And my grandpa fixed that. Um, so that worked. And my, my brain monster one, that one worked for literally not even 10 minutes and the wire pulled off the power and my grandpa fixed that. It, like he fixed them every time. Okay. That's my point. He doesn't really know how to fix them anymore since he's aged a bit. He doesn't understand them anymore. But at the time he did know what to do. And like I said, split gears weren't a problem. So, you know, that wasn't. But there was times I had a I had a weasel ball one time and the motor the motor wouldn't the motor would buzz but the mechanism wouldn't move and uh, so he took it apart and I didn't watch what he would did but he got it working somehow so it was something with the gears so he was somewhat good with gears I guess um, he got it working he must have crazy it had to have been a split motor shaft gear even though they're still knew it must have been a factory defect and he must have like crazy glued the gear on or something because we didn't have any extra gears so and th those use worm gears so um yeah and my dad um my hula hoop sand from tl toys oh nightmare right there every day after we fixed it it would break again and again and again the rubber belt it was actually the whole time it was the rubber belt and I didn't know that but my dad always took it apart like because it would stop moving 
I think the gears would pop out of place, maybe, or something. I don't know how. Like I said, I think it was the rubber belt the whole time. And my, every time my dad opened it up, he had to reline up the gears. Oh, he would get so pissed at it. Like, my dad and grandpa, that's where I got my language from when I fix my stuff. That's why when I'm repairing stuff, I say the F-bombs and all that because I got it from them. My grandpa is one of those pe people, like, if he drops, like, a screw or slips or his screwdriver slips, he'll be like, God damn it! <laughs> and, and, then, and then my dad, dad, oh, fuck, you piece of shit! <laughs> and, he, and my dad would always go, Ugh! and he, like, he would moan. Like, yes! My dad, when he was repairing the floating skeleton, when he was repairing when he was repairing that floating skeleton, the, you know how the poles don't line up? Yeah, he couldn't get the line up, and he got so mad that he was like, Ugh! and he threw the ball. He threw the pole. <laughs> so there are, there, there, it's more stress fixing this stuff, but, you know, in the end, it turns out to be funny. But okay, while it, you can ask, you can ask Jordan about Martin. Even I raised it. While it's happening, it is the most stressful thing ever. <laughs> but anyways back to the hula hoop santa story yeah he would get pissed he would start cussing up a storm on it you know he would he would try to make the gears fit because like when you pull it off sometimes the gears all come out and it's like oh you have to figure out where they all go and then half the time when you put it back together it didn't move right it was like all crazy and stuff and like and then okay that was one of the problems that i always had with like again it was the rubber belt the whole time because there's no way those gears can pop out. There was nothing wrong with those gears. I, I took it apart back in 2012 when I got a second one. There was absolutely nothing wrong with them, the gears. Um, but the other problem that that hula hoop stand had, the wires pulled off every time. You solder them, they come off again 10 minutes later. And now the wires are so short because of how many times it's been soldered that I would have to put a whole new wire in it. Because it's just, those wires are dead. They were dead from the start. You know why? Because my second hula hoop Santa, it's never had a wire come off. That one has. So it, there was just, I don't know, that one was a dud. <laughs> and that hula hoop Santa is actually still non-functional right now because I didn't have the screws in it. So when my mom picked it up, it came, everything came apart. And all the gears fell out, and there's a missing gear now, so that's all. But, yeah, so, you know, ask your the, the point of this story is that, you know, ask your parents for help. They might, you might be surprised. And, you know, my dad figured out how to repair the floating ghost right off the bat, and he, he taught me the special trick of how to get the strain attached to the mechanism, you know? you be, I know problems are worse today than it was now, because, like, again, the plastic was still good you know the plastic is very brittle now because it's old and same thing with the gears but still you never know you guys know that the gears are split you guys know so ask for help you know tell them that this needs to go here and you know you need some guidance you know and you might be too young to use a soldering iron so you're so ask your parents if they can use one for you and tell them where the wire is supposed to go like because, um, you know, if, and there, here's some signs, if, if something's not moving, but the motor's also not spinning, there's only two problems, well, three problems with that, sometimes. Sometimes they're fried, okay, sometimes, but fried out things tend to do something a little more abnormal, um, but sometimes, okay, other times it's the motor, depending on how slow it was in the process and to the point where it, you know, died completely. Or it's just, a, if, like, if it was a brand new item and the motor was perfectly fine before and it just all of a sudden quit, that's a wire. That's a wire. It's nothing else. Um, so those are your three problems. Like, fried out, like, like my first pull for my floating ghost, it's fried, so, and... The problem is, it o the, the motor only spins downwards, not up. So what happens is the strain goes all the way down, and then it starts going up, and then it, and it'll never go back down again, unless you pull it down. That's fried. And 
fry things can be like if you t plug in like a 12 volt adapter to a 6 volt it's gonna fry the sound and all that and that's gonna be it blows some uh, of the capacitors on the circuit board which we haven't learned how to replace those yet but Bailey definitely plans to do that in the future um, me, I don't really understand circuit boards. I'm not much of a circuit board guy. I don't know how circuit boards are programmed or any of that. I just know that the circuit board controls everything. That's all I know about circuit boards. Okay, so when, when they fry or when a capacitor dies, I don't know how to do anything from there. It's, it's I know how to replace motors. I know how to replace the motor shaft gears. I know how to resolder wires, and that's really the basic steps, okay? When something is fried, there's not a whole lot you can do about it, besides re trying there's to replace... There's not a whole lot it, really anybody can do about it when you think about it. Yeah, like, there's... It's just... You know, almost nobody is able to repair fried... I mean, some are, some are, but a lot aren't. A lot of people don't, aren't, don't learn, because there's a ton of capacitors on those boards, and you're... You, basically have to find the same exact capacitors because there's millions of different voltages and all that you have to find all the same ones and replace all of them just to be sure not just one you know because you don't even know in there which one's blown or not you don't yeah, know you cannot really guess i mean you can get a meter to actually measure the uh the yeah it's like if it's getting, but it's, it's extremely complicated so what you end up having to do is getting the exact type of voltages it needs in capacitor-wise and replacing every single one of them. Yeah. Which averages out to about 20, when you think about it. Yeah. Maybe more. So, yeah, so again, hey, Bailey, is there anything else that you think that we need to pull out or point um, out? Patience. One of them is patience. Unfortunately, that's something I'm really bad at. That's why I don't put all the screws back in my shit. <laughs> so that's one thing you don't you don't need to do is not put all you, the screws back in. Because if you know, I mean, it just it's necessary. I'll just put it that way. Yeah, but like a lot of my repairs, I kind of try to look for the cheap cuts, the cheap cuts to repairing things, like. Yeah. Bailey does always does the lawn way just to be safe. I always do. I always find try to find the shortest way possible. Which he's the shortcut guy. I'll find any type of shortcuts possible to get like, there. Like okay, like my Three Stooges for example. Okay, remember the first time I tried repairing those and I cut my finger with a box cutter because I tried slicing it because I, I didn't think that there was just any possible way to get that apart because it was all molded together. Well, there was another way. You had to open up the base, take the screws out of the feet, and unfortunately, it involves ripping the wires off of them, but you have to rip the wires off the motor, and then the, the whole gearbox will come out after you get the staples out, too. And then, you know, replace the motor shaft gear. Just You can just pull... That's one that you can actually just pull, uh, take the screw out that holds the motor, and then you can take out... Some motors are screwed in from the inside of the gearbox. I hate those ones. Yeah, I can't. I personally can't stand those. But, the, but, yeah, so pay attention to that. Make sure you know. Don't just pull, because you never know. No, because if you pull, you'll pull the back part of the motor out with, like, the bearings and everything. It's not yeah. what you want to do. Yeah, but, like, ones that actually have a clear screw holding it in, yeah, those are fine. Take that out and then pull the motor out and then replace the gear, put it back. The Three Stooges, you know... Their holes are so small for the wires to go back through that it's almost like it wasn't. I didn't think it was possible to get the wires back in yeah, once you get Jordan them out. Sent me his, tell him about the time he sent me like your sets. Like how rough can uh, like how rough shape they're in or what? Well, like all that I basically like had. Bailey did the, the, actually. The, the ones that I repaired for him were the ones that I ended up repairing and keeping and stuff. Those were basically one of Jordan's first experiments with them. The, all those first ones that I had to go back and My first, Jordan's my like, very first set, clicker it. version and the levered version. Levered version was, oh, everything, it was snapped, okay? Curly was snapped off, Larry's arm was snapped off, and a couple pieces, actually. Um, it needed to, it needed some rewiring because the wiring in Curly's arm was shot, 
as well as I think Larry's arm. Th Larry's arm was shorting out. The wires were so, yeah. the wires were touching on the inside, which is bad. <laughs> um. So yeah, but it was possible to get the wires back through the legs. It's just you gotta kind of closely look. Because the first time I tried doing it, I put it through the screw holders of Mo, which that didn't work because when you put the screws in, breaks the wires. And I had I tried hot gluing, that didn't work. Hot gluing a Mo back on the base since I couldn't put the screw in, that didn't work. So the, sometimes those cheap cuts, like cutting open the whole mechanism, isn't the best solution, Un unless it's your only solution. But in that case, that wasn't the only solution. I just, I wanted to try to do the faster way, which the faster way turned out making the repair even longer than it should have been. Because if I would have just opened it up from the bottom of the base and all that stuff, it would have saved me a bunch of time. And uh, yeah, I, I end up cutting my thumb. <laughs> and oh, that's another thing. You will occasionally slip and cut yourself sometimes so be very careful and never ever touch a side and, and, and don't lose your cool when you do that don't lose your cool and yeah sometimes i get so mad that i just want to throw the thing across the room but that's not gonna work okay okay it's not gonna work um <laughs> but you know um never touch us again i know i know this is an obvious thing but you know just since this is a video a tips Never touch a solder iron while it's turned on. Never. No, I've learned that the hard way by just not paying attention to it. It's so easy, honestly. It, it's easier than you think. One time I wasn't looking, I grabbed the iron part of it, not the handle. Because, yeah, <laughs> yep. that was... Three years ago, I remember I was working on something, and I grabbed Never. the solder iron, and... And the thing is, it burnt my the top part of my finger, like right above my knuckle, and that scar is still there. Like they don't go away. Again, and also, never touch from a battery compartment. Never touch negative to positive wires together. Instant smoke will shoot up, and if you're touching that with your thumb, it will burn right through the skin of your thumb. I I experienced that with a crawling army man one time. I was like, I couldn't get it. The motor must have died because, you know, other than that, I didn't see any problems. So I, I thought, oh, maybe if I connect the red wire with the black wire, <laughs> instant burn. I was like, oh, that that burned for a while. That that's that really stung. So don't do that. <laughs> if a wire is tore, it's most likely going to go to the same color wire. Not in opposite color. <laughs> so, always remember that. <laughs> Similar incident, I just don't remember. <laughs> yeah. Um, I feel like there is some other things, but I don't know. Uh, you know what, Jordan? I'm just going to wait until you send me another connector piece here, because I just can't. Okay. And again, there yeah, are... Just send, me, just send me, like, the two let me just show you. Um, Sorry, guys. Send me this outer piece here and the inner piece. I need at least one, two of those because either one of the either this is worn out or either the thing inside here with the holes in okay. is worn out. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, because I because I can't. I don't want to keep taking risks and like do something I'm not supposed to and just kill the whole thing. Yeah, that's, uh, I'm just gonna yeah, wait on that's it. fine. Yeah. Um, anyways, um, there are some things that are not repairable, guys, okay? There are some, some, like, Bailey, those connector pieces that connect to the floating ghost. Exactly. That's a clear example of what just happened right here. Those, Jordan has some spare connector pieces that he's going to say. Honestly, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be able to do it because... And the thing is, sometimes you'll have to... When, one time, I actually had to do this with a friendly ghost, Jordan. I had to direct wire it. Mm hmm Yeah. I took both connector pieces... And direct wired all the things. It was crazy. It ended up working though. You know in that Halloween video? That was after I direct wired it too, so it actually worked. Yeah. So And if you if you guys do, but that's just more tedious and another thing you'll never be able to take apart that one pole again. Like, exactly. That's yeah. It. That's the thing. Um <laughs> uh, <laughs>
Oh yeah, if you guys don't know what direct wiring means, it means when you connect a wire to a wire. Like, you know how, like I said, the floating ghost, the connector pieces that connect to the poles, um, those connector pieces can break, and if you don't have spares, sometimes your only solution is soldering the wires to the wires. And again, make sure you solder the same color wire to the same color wire, because if not, it's well, not like good. Screwed up. Well, not I, necessarily. No, in like some okay, some sometimes not. Like, you know, sometimes depending, like if you're soldering something from the circuit board to something else, that can cause it to fry. So, but you know, things like that, like yeah, um. And like, if, like for example, like you know those dumb wire harnesses that you know Spirit Halloween props have that connect wires rip out of those things all the time, you know. And when that happens, those wires come out and you can't even really get them back in the connectors. So you have to direct wire them, which means you can't disassemble the item because once you wire those together, the only way you can get the wires apart is cutting them. You don't want to do that. So that's the solution to that. Um, there's something else too. Uh, Bailey, any... Uh, See, there's direct wiring. And like he, again, I'm, I might as well just repeat it. Direct wiring, you know, is this where you direct wire, literally direct wire it. And I don't know if you've had to do this with any of your poles, but I've had to do this with one friendly ghost. Uh, unless, of course, I get new connectors. If I get new connectors, that's great. I'll just, you know, I'll re-solder a new connector, and then it's good to go, which I may do one day. I am, I am doing it with this since he's sending me the parts, but for the other friendly ghost, it's fine. It works okay. I don't have to worry about it right yeah. now. And like I said, things, little pieces like that are sometimes not repairable, and certain plastic pieces that break on things are kind of... Like, like those levers on the hip swinging mechanisms... We haven't found the best solution for that yet, but we will. Okay, I, as far as I know, m the next time I have a broken lever, I'm going to try something with it. Um, and if it's successful, I'll show you exactly what to do. If not, I won't, because why? That's a waste of time. <laughs> but, um, you know, things like a... actually have future plans for stuff, things like levers, knobs, stuff like that. It, our plan is to yeah. actually get... Fabricated, custom yeah, fabricated um, to where other people can buy them, and just we might for people's basic needs. For those one, things. one one day we might have to invest in a three D printer. Um, yeah, one of these days we will do that, and we will sell them for like maybe five to ten bucks apart. It's yeah, very fair because they're hard to make. They are. They do take a long. They take a long time too. And you know, say we print out ten pieces, ten bucks a piece. Yeah, you know, we'll sell them at fair prices, and we will let you know if that actually ends up happening. Yeah, um, and um, because what you have to do, you can't put a broken piece on a 3D printer, okay? Because it's going to 3D print as a broken piece. So you have to take a piece from a fully working item that's not yet broken or has any wear of it whatsoever, and then put that in it, and then it'll copy that. And depending on the kind of plastic you use, it can be sometimes cheaper quality, but we're going to try and get a good one if we do that because we're going to need it but yeah but so things like you know again the floating ghost snap string floating or broken strings for the mouse that talk on the skull props those are repairable very repairable those things you could just repair any other day like it's not don't that. do not th this the point of this video is to don't throw away an item if it's broken I, I hate, I mean, I don't believe in throwing away animated items, you know, because even if they're the most messed up crap, they're still useful for parts or for a static prop, okay? People will buy it, you know, yeah, like, especially if it's, all this Jimmy stuff is actually worth something now. So if you sell something, you'll still get money off, selling it on eBay anyways, if you sell it on eBay, you'll still make money off of it selling it broken because there are collectors who know like us who know how to fix them and if not we can use them for parts or use another one for parts to pick fix that one if it's a more rare model you know 
things like that. Don't throw them away. They're to tell your parents they're not worth throwing away because sometimes it's the parents' decisions. I know that. Okay, man. I wish I would have known how to fix this stuff as a kid. That's the only reason I don't have the one that pulled off his head anymore. And it just, I lost so many items because I didn't know how to fix them. Or also, if you don't know how to fix anything, if you don't know where to start, don't try it yet. Don't, don't try to fix something until you truly know what to do. Because oh yeah, that's another thing I was about to say. And do not don't experiment. when you start fixing something. Don't leave it taken taken apart for weeks. Don't start on it and just forget about it. Put it back together. I mean, it, like if you're not gonna ever finish fixing it, put it back together because it's gonna be thrown away. Okay, that's what happened to all my items. I opened stuff up and I didn't know what I was doing. I made them worse and I didn't know how to put them back together at that point, and they're gone. So don't do that unless you know. You know, just don't throw them away. That's all I ask because you're going to regret it in the future. I regret everything I got rid of, okay? Even though sometimes you have to. But again, the best option is to just sell it. I mean, would, really, you're throwing away items that are soon going to be extinct at some point. You know, this stuff isn't going to be around forever. Knowing how they break, but this is that's the point of this. They're still useful even if they're broken. They're still valuable. Th this stuff isn't going to be made forever. Technology is going up. Someday in the future, this stuff is going to be too boring for future people that they won't buy this kind of stuff anymore. And this is, this is, this will be very high, like high. Th these will be antiques that everyone will be looking for in the future. Everyone who grew up with it, they'll be going to antique stores looking for this stuff. Because someday this, you know, maybe they'll still exist, you know, but in a higher form. Like, parts will change, you know, over time. But low, things like, ones like this, they're not going to be around forever. They still, they aren't even around right now. They're still not making them good to this day. So who knows if they're even going to make things like this anymore. You know, people are just too focused on technology that... This stuff is not going to be an entertainment anymore to anyone. So these will be antiques someday. Whether you or your parents want to believe it or not, they will be. We didn't, my, 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 my dad didn't think this was going to be as popular as it's become. My dad is full on this stuff. Like he, he agrees with me now. He wants us to do the museum idea and all that stuff now. He knows, you know. But back then, it was just toys back then, you know? You know, but now he understands. So hold on to your items. And if you can't sell them to someone. Wait, start over. Sorry, I had, it stopped at that point. Sorry, start over. Okay. About the uh, museum, though, guys, you may think, you know, oh, that's so unrealistic. It's never going to happen. It, it might just happen. As long as you have the money, as long as we have investments in it, as long as we have other resources and other, you know, priorities first, of course, you know, home life and everything. But, like, after all that, and we all invest in a certain building and, you know, to build and this, that, and the other, all, the, all that stuff is done and over with. It's certainly possible because we have the stuff, you know, all we basically need is a building and just, just fill it in and just make it look nice. Yeah. So, again, if something's broken, don't throw it away. I mean, if if your parents tell you that you have to get rid of it because it's broken, convince them that to at least sell it to someone who will hold on to it, you know? Because, again, why do you think some of this stuff has become so rare? It's not just because that it was limited edition or anything. It's because they're being thrown away. Some people throw things away that aren't even broken. They just like, oh, nobody's going to want this. They're full, they throw away a fully working item. That's, people do that. And that's, I hate that. And, you know, and I, I don't even want to know how much people have thrown away of this stuff because it honestly pisses me off <laughs> okay like i said i don't believe in throwing away stuff like this even if it's the most broken I believe in selling this 
good stuff, but not throwing it away. Yeah, because there is parts in them. There's parts in them that can be used. You know, so, you know, we, we, we just want to educate you about this stuff. And, that, you know, some some parts of on them sometimes aren't very apparent, like, like those dancing homers right now. When, they're, when the pieces, when the pin holders on the inside of their arms break, there's no solution to fix that. Just because of the way it's designed, there's that little yellow piece that go that connects to the arm that goes all the way down to the shoulder or I don't know side piece and there's not much you can do about that that's where the 3d printer would have to come in you would have to yeah, take because, you, some parts would just have to be remade. It can't really be you modified. you would have to take a homer that isn't split or broken at all and get it, it take a piece by piece every not you don't put multiple things in at the same time you can, no one section of a piece at a time and print it and i think you can only print one piece at a time too so yeah you pretty much yeah, yeah. so it, and it takes time too it uh, our school yeah, had it and true. it takes a long time just to print something small so it it takes a while so yeah Anyways, I hope, I mean, is there anything we missed, Bailey, or? I really don't think so. I think we pretty much covered every, the basics and everything else. Oh, rubber belts. Those can be purchased at your local Ace Hardware, actually. I actually got mine. I even at Ace Hardware. I got them at just any type of hardware store. They'll sell them to you for like a buck. Because actually they're used in, I guess they're used in sinks, too. Yeah, they're used as like, they're actually used as like grommets to like, prevent things from leaking. Yeah. It's interesting. And, you know, they're a little bit tighter than the ones that actual companies put on, but that's why they wear out so fast. The ones that the companies put on are always so stretched out. And, you know, my my dropping heads from 2008, my their, their belts were bad within the sixth activation. They, they went to the top and they would slip down. And it's like, and the same with the, the the face changer with the arms that go up. They would they would go up, drop back down before the face spins due to the rubber belt. And it's like they used horrible at belts at that time. So, but you know, try to get one close to the same size because if you since they are tighter, if you get one that's a little smaller, it's gonna make this motor slower and it's gonna wear down the motor. I've learned that from the floating ghost because that's exactly what happened over time. The motors got weaker. So find one that's exactly the same size. It's going to be tighter so it'll work. So, um, yeah. And hot glue guns, um, yeah, they, they work for, actually, they've actually worked out on some items for me. Like, oh, that's another thing I forgot to mention. My Rising from the Grave Reaper from 2009, it snapped in the center out of the pole one time. And the old Rising from the Graves had this pole design where there was little slots along the pole. And uh, I, I couldn't fix it. I tried, hot, I tried gluing it, but my grandpa actually fixed it. He took the, he hot glued it and he put, he glued popsicle sticks in between each of the grooves and it never broke again. Like he, I don't know how he, but it ended up breaking again on Halloween 2012 on Halloween day. But it didn't break in that spot. It broke in the lower portion where the piece springs up. It broke on that part of the pole, and that part right there isn't really fixable because that's where all the force is. So, um, yeah. I just wanted to mention that, like, like I said, my grandpa used to fix a lot of my stuff. He did. Um, he he wouldn't know how to do it anymore. Um, so, but yeah. Anyways, I hope this video was help. I hope you watched through this video, and I hope you learned a little bit. Kind of. I know I didn't really show. I didn't show you anything, but it was just explaining. You know. Yeah, basically. So if you heard all of that, and if you if you have any additional questions that we may, may or may not have covered. Just please put them in the comments below. We'll be happy to respond. Yeah. So um, until then, I guess that's it for this video. So thank you for watching.